Hey guys, it's Tame and Doran Luffy, and welcome to another episode of the Man to Man College Podcast. Today I'm here with my good friend and co host, Ben. Hey guys. And today we are going to be doing our most underrated players on NFL teams. So the plan is to do all the NFC teams today, all NFC West, South, East, and North players. And if we have more time, we'll do the AFC, but we'll start with the NFC. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. So um, basically, I took this as underrated, meaning the media, casual fans, and, you know, just kind of the way they're portrayed. So starting off with the NFC West, for the Los Angeles Rams and how this is going to work is I'm going to say my pick for the team. Ben is going to say his thoughts and then his pick, and I'll say my thoughts and we'll move on. So for the Rams, I have cornerback rookie Darius Williams. Uh, He has been outstanding this season as one of the better corners. He is playing better than Jeff Okuda, who was a top draft pick. He is super athletic. He is very agile the way he uses his body. He reminds me a lot of, I'm trying to find a, he's very, I wouldn't call him small, but he's like very fast. He's kind of a lot, I'm trying to think of a good example. He reminds me a lot of Desmond King from the Chargers, who also, or now in the Titans, who's also very underrated. So I'm going with Darius Williams for the Rams. Ben, how about you? Um, for the Rams, I'm going to pick Daryl Henderson, the running back. He's been very efficient this year, and he's been a huge reason why the Rams' running game is a lot better than they were last year. Uh, he's just part of that uh, backfield committee that's done really well. Uh, and he's just been – he hasn't been, like, you know, the best running back in the world, but he's had some really good games here and there where he's gone for over 100 yards, and he's just a really efficient running back. doesn't really turn the ball over. Um, yeah. That's good. Um, I think it was the right move for him, for them to move off of Todd Gurley, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I was always in support of that move, and it's paying off pretty well. They also have Malcolm Brown, who's played pretty good, so that is nice. For the 49ers, I picked Fred Warner. I originally had Debo Samuel, but I feel like Debo Samuel gets the respect he deserves. Um, Fred Warner is one of the better middle linebackers. He's super instinctive. He sees the field well. Um, He's just very athletic. Um, I think he's a big part of that San Francisco defense. So, Ben, who who do you have, and what's your thoughts on Fred Warner? Um, Yeah, Fred Warner was my – probably like my alternate pick for this spot, but I have another – linebacker Dre Greenlaw um he plays the game with a ton of energy I feel like he's giving 100% on every play he's really fast really athletic linebacker he's great at pass rushing he's good at covering he's a great run stuffer he just does everything really really well and I think he doesn't really get talked about as like this really good like outside linebacker um but yeah he is a he was a huge part of that Niners defense last year. Um, And I think he was a rookie too. So. Yeah, he's a very nice piece. So two good pieces on this Niners defense. Next up for the Seahawks, I picked wide receiver Tyler Lockett. I think DK Metcalf, speaking of the opposite of underrated, I think DK Metcalf has been extremely overrated ever since he made the tackle on Buda Baker everyone's like DK's a top five wide receiver I'm like y'all need to calm down he's great but don't forget about Tyler Lockett number 16 is so efficient he's fast he's good in the deep balls but he's also good in the short and medium game so I'm going with uh, Tyler Lockett for my Seahawks pick yeah I I I don't know if Tyler Lockett's really, like, underrated. But Hmm. I agree with everything that you said. I guess. I mean, well, one of my my, uh, friends is a Seahawks fan, and he loves Tyler Lockett. Like, he's talked about him since he got drafted because he went to Kansas, where this guy's from. So uh, maybe it's just different for me. Um, but, yeah, uh, my Seahawks player is actually uh, the guy who won them the game tonight, Carlos Dunlap. 
Um, he's having a nice little career rejuvenation with the Seahawks. Um, he's played really well with them so far. He's brought a much needed pass rush to a, well, he's really the lone bright spot on that defense. I mean, they struggle pretty much everywhere else, but thanks to Dunlap being there, they have one less spot to worry about. And I think that has brought a huge relief to that team. Um, so by the way, for those who are watching, we're watching this on the night of the Seahawks Cardinals week 11 Thursday night football game. That's when we're recording. I disagree with the selection. I think Dunlap's been a very underrated player throughout his career. Last year, he got nine sacks for the Bengals, but I don't think he's gone that much for Seattle. Besides that game-winning sack, I think he's been good. Um, I guess we'll see how he finishes out this season. I think if the Seahawks defense continues to play good, uh, you can maybe have him in talks there. Yeah, well, I mean, he's only been there for two games, so. True. He's a very underrated player in his career. And then for the Arizona Cardinals, I went with Byron Murphy, cornerback. You're number two for him, or three? Two number or two, three. yeah. As Ben does a, does a thumbs up. Yeah. Byron Murphy's super agile. I don't think he's a top corner yet. But if we're giving Madden ratings, and I hate to do this, but one out of 100, I'll put him at like an 85, 86. And I think that is where he's at. He's really nice. And with Patrick Peterson, um, you know, in the last episode, we had him to a Pro Bowl. But he kind of had some – I think he has like one more year left, Pat Peter being really good. And then I think he'll – um, I think Byron Murphy is going to become one of the better corners. Oh, yeah. Uh, Byron Murphy is my underrated player, too. Absolutely nobody talks about this guy. And let me tell you, he's one of the most versatile corners in the league. This guy can cover just about anybody. Uh, really important plays. Last time we played the Seahawks, he had a huge sack on Russell Wilson on, like, third down. And nobody talked about it. People only talked about the Isaiah Simmons pick that came afterward and uh, he gets really overlooked a lot because he plays with Patrick Peterson he plays on a team that's up and coming and he's a second year guy uh, but uh, I have met this guy he he went to a couple of GCU basketball games when I go to college uh, so I got to see him oh, um, I didn't cool. even know who he was at the time <laughs> um, they just said that an Arizona Cardinals player was with Byron Murphy and then I turn on my TV on Sunday see him out there playing pretty good um, but, yeah, he's come a long way uh, since last year, and he – I agree with you. I think he's probably – once Patrick Peterson's done and gone, he can take his spot and be just as good, if not better. Um, no, this guy's got a bright future ahead of him. Well, I mean, it's only second year. Corners take a while to develop. I mean, Byron in one year has shown a ton of progress because last year he had a lot of things that he just missed and uh, just assignments that were not on the right page. But um, this year, he's come along way better. Uh, he's not giving up, like, any catches. He's playing really, really good. Um, I almost never see him getting beat for a play. Uh, I think he's super underrated. Yeah, I agree. Going on to the NFC South, we have, <laughs> we have for the Carolina Panthers, I mentioned him several times, Brian Burns. Dude's an absolute animal. Um, in his play style, he's super energetic. He's all over the field. He's athletic. Um, now, he doesn't make all the plays, but he has really nice sacks, turnovers. He's like Byron Murphy where, you know, he's in year two. But I thought Byron Burns had some excellent plays last year, and this year he's continued to build on it. Seems like a great guy. Um, the, his nickname is Spider Burns because, like Spider-Man, he's just all over the place, you know, sack there. Sack there, sack there. <laughs> um, but the dude is great um, for the Panthers. Teddy Bridgewater or Curtis Samuel is my alternate, but I love Brian Burns. So he is my selection. Yeah, I agree with all that. Um, my, my underrated player is Curtis Samuel. I think he's uh, putting together a nice string of uh, some really good um, – he plays with – a a pretty good offensive core. Um, they got Christian McCaffrey, Mike Davis. Well, Christian McCaffrey hasn't played much this year, but uh, Mike Davis has pretty much stepped in and been almost at the same level. He's been really, really good. Mm, not um, at the same level. Well, not like not, not almost. At, you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. he's been able to produce to the air and the ground. 
Um, DJ I guess Moore's I there as well. Right. Robbie yeah. Anderson. DJ Moore's there. Robbie Anderson is there. Those guys get talked about a lot. Curtis Samuel about a whole lot because he's like the he's like the third receiver on the team but he's capable of making some nice plays he's really consistent I don't see him making a lot of goof ups um he and he's putting together a, a good run here with um two or three really good games in a row here so I think I think he deserves a little bit of credit headed his way you know game ball here or there yeah Ben sorry for interruption but I will say this that I think this is Curtis Samuel's last deal I had this idea. I could see the Dolphins signing him. I think that would be a really good move. Because Miami, you have Tua. Devontae Parker is your number one. Preston Williams is your number three. I think Curtis Samuel will be that perfect number two. I think in that offense, more of that quick passing game that the Dolphins have, with that speed with Curtis Samuel, I could see that working out really well. And with the Panthers, if they lose him, you have – Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey, and maybe another wide receiver you pick up. So that's an yeah, idea. Yeah, there will be there will be some good free agent wide receivers this year. I would imagine. Um, I would imagine. Well, no, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna talk about AJ Green right now because he's kind of all over the place. Packers, go to the Packers. That would be nice. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, he's he's been kind of inconsistent this year. But let's not talk about AJ Green. Let's talk about Curtis Samuel. <laughs> I think I could see him going to the Dolphins and being a good slot receiver because Devontae Parker and Preston Williams are both pretty tall. Uh, Parker's like 6'4", and I think Preston Williams is like uh, – I know he's above 6'1". I think he's 6'1 or 6'2". I think Curtis Samuel's like 5'11". Put him in the slot right there. He'd be a great great weapon for them to throw to. Uh, it really all depends on – if Albert Wilson and Alan Hearns come back next year, though, because I know they opted out this year. So it really depends on what Brian Flores wants to do with those two guys. Yeah, he's a smart guy, so I trust him. Speaking of a player whose last name is a co of A.J. Green, <laughs> my most underrated Buccaneers player is Devin White. Uh, I've talked about Devin White so much on this podcast. Um, I love the pick when he was drafted. Love him, super athletic, all of the field. I think you could argue – is a top five linebacker in the league, top six, at least in a top ten conversation. I love the dude. He is so good all over the field. Um, he is my selection for the most underrated play on the books. People are starting to talk about him more and more. I will give people that, but still I think that he could be talked about a lot more. Um, linebackers are very underrated. So they're kind of in this range, but I think he could get in that Luke Keekley, Bobby Wagner discussion. Um, I mean, he's on pace for it. He's in year two, and he's already a top seven guy, in my opinion. So, yeah. Um, I could totally see that. I don't think he's all that underrated. I mean, I guess linebackers themselves are just kind of underrated, but like you said. Um, but my underrated uh, – player here is going to be scotty miller uh this guy has been absolutely nuts when he's been out there i mean this dude i i don't know if he's a rookie or i don't know where he came from maybe the nearest walmart tom brady went and grabbed a guy (laughs) but um um but yeah scotty miller's great he he got some production earlier this season going down because of the a b Mike Evans, Chris Godwin signing, but still a great guy. He's a lot like Wes Walker. I love that pick. I forgot about it because he's been quiet recently. Yeah, dude. He's And he's just got a fun name to say, too. He just kind of reminds me, like, Scotty Miller kind of has the same energy as, like, Conor McGregor. That I feel like <laughs> like that's, that's who I think of. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they both sound kind of Irish. Like, uh, Scotty just sounds kind of Irish. Um, <laughs> I just oh, think of Scotty Miller, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> that's so good. I don't know. I just, I love the guy. <laughs> Did he hear that? I, like, choked on my laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just went. <laughs> okay. Anyways, let's go to the Falcons. Um, not the Saints. Saints, we have Demario Davis. Dude is another great inside linebacker. Does the other thing. Oh, yeah. Doesn't get that much respect. I would also say 
and I'm using this, I'm actually, I'm all, my alternate is Taysom Hill. A lot of people, like, he's a Swiss Army knife, but I think he's become more of the Swiss Army knife meme, I guess you could say. Everyone's like, oh, Taysom Hill can do everything, which is true to an extent, but he's really good. He's a pretty decent thrower. He can run the ball well. He's great on special teams. Um, like, the dude is pretty talented, so he's my runner-up. Uh, yeah, Taysom Hill is my most underrated player. I love when uh, Sean Payton uses this guy. I honestly wish we knew a little bit more about, like, how good he was at throwing the football. Like, he hasn't thrown the ball a whole lot, and he's like a quarterback, but not really. But he's a good runner. He's a good blocker, a good receiver. He s- seemed like a good thrower. Um yeah, and he's got a cannon too. He can throw it pretty far, uh, but he can. Re- he really can do everything on offense. You could honestly, if you lost a bunch of offensive linemen, I think you could throw him in there, and he he wouldn't give up any sacks. I, I believe that. I remember it was preseason after Lamar Jackson's rookie, and the Saints were playing the Chargers. I think in Los Angeles preseason, and Taysom Hill threw this dime. And like, dude, I wish Lamar Jackson could be this good. And then Lamar Jackson went to go win MVP. So I just thought, I remember that. Next up for the Falcons, say with me, Ben, Matt, Ryan, or not. Oh, you, really? I, I guess he has been kind of underrated this year. Okay, he's, I, I, ever since the Super Bowl, people have been just like disrespecting him. No one gives him credit. He's been great. The blown leads are not his fault. He's fantastic in the pocket. He can make every throw. I just don't think he's a top-tier quarterback because he has trouble extending the plays. But Matt Ryan is a dude who is always going to be great. He talked about his Hall of Fame status. I don't know. He's close for me. But I think that he definitely is just – what he's just a very great quarterback. We can talk about like a prototype quarterback. That's why I think of good size, good stature, good arm. Matt Ryan is just such a consistently great guy in the NFL. I think him and Matt Stafford are the more underrated players in the league, so I'm going with Matt Ryan um, yeah. for Atlanta. I I kind of – you know, I originally had Calvin Ridley as my guy, but I think I kind of want to change my Matt Ryan because, yeah, everything you said there is right. Uh, he's super underrated. The media always gives him a ton of crap. Um, him and Stafford are consistently very, very good on bad teams. And it's not really their fault. Like, there's nothing they can really do about the defense. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. I, I originally was going to have Calvin Ridley because, like, he plays opposite Julio and everybody, oh, uh, Julio Jones and, oh, uh, who's this other guy, Calvin Ridley? But, you know, uh, he's, he's been playing really, really good this year especially. And I just think it's time for him to get the credit he deserves. But I, I think Matt Ryan probably is the most underrated Falcon. You're right. I will say Calvin Ridley's stock, and people have been noticing that's been going up, but crashing down into the NFC East with the Eagles, we got – Ben is like, oh, no. Um, I'm going to go with Brandon Graham. Um, there's not a ton of players as an Eagles fan. I will say Carson Wentz had a pretty nice game against the Steelers. He made some game-winning plays against the Niners and the Ravens game. He almost won, but he still had some really bad moments. I think Dallas Gar almost picked, but I think he's equally rated. I think Brandon Graham is really nice off the edge. He had that Super Bowl winning play, and besides, and he just has been great since that. We've talked no, a lot. No, that was Derek of, Barnett. No, Graham. Zach. Graham forced it, but not recovered it. You sure? I thought yeah. it was Derek Barnett. He recovered it. Okay. I thought um, Derek Barnett did both. That's no, my bad. It's okay. Um. We've talked all on the show about the Eagles, how they're bad, how they've mishandled that Super Bowl. But I think one piece they've kept is Brandon Graham. And I think he's been really good. And I think I, he's probably top 10 edge rusher. I'll probably take like Miles Garrett, Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald, TJ Watt, Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa, Cam Jordan. Um, I don't know, but I would say he's around 9 or 10. Um, Daniel Hunter. Um, so. Um, that's kind of why I'm at here on I, for my Eagles pick. It's Brandon Graham. Yeah, I. 
I don't know how like underrated he is. I guess like for I guess the media doesn't really talk about him that much, but I feel like I feel like he gets a lot of respect from like fans and players. Okay. Um, I can see that. But yeah, I I agree with everything you said. Um I was going to go with Dallas Goddard because he's been nice this year filling in for Ertz and all that and he doesn't get talked about at all. That's um, true. But I'm actually going to change mine to Boston Scott. Uh, he has been really, really good. He's actually been really impressive. Um, I didn't really know anything about this guy, and I didn't think he was going to be all that great. But, yeah, but uh, he's, he's super good against the Giants, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what's going on behind me. It, <laughs> someone keeps opening my door. Monsters yeah, Inc. remake. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah boston scott is super nice um yeah. i will say that he is underrated he reminds me a lot of james robinson um he reminds me a lot of Tariq cohen actually he's like five mm. nine he's really short that touchdown catch that he had was a impressive because he's a running back and b impressive because he's well under six foot so and he made that in coverage like on the sideline that's nuts if Tar- yeah, that is fantastic. If Tariq Cohen yeah. was with the Chiefs, the dude would put up Christian McCaffrey oh, numbers. So good. He's literally with any other team besides the Bears. I yeah, we're not doing that again. Okay. Anyways, for the Giants, we have James Bradbury, super good um cornerback. Was good on the Panthers. Bummed that they let him go. He's super good. He's just great at coverage. He's solid. Um I don't know really. Who else to say? I like Darius Slayton, but I think that Slayton has um, just the big plays. I have yet to see a down-to-down consistency. I think if you like if the Bears sign Allen Robinson, I think Darius Slayton would be a perfect number two. But um, Daniel Jones, I think I like him more than others. We've talked about this before, but I don't know. He has a lot of turnovers. Um I'm just going to go with James Bradbury. I think he's super nice. I think he's a really good corner. I don't think he's top 10, but I think he's like that top 15 range. I think a lot of teams would like to have James Bradbury. So that's who I'm going with for my, my Giants selection. Um, yeah, that's my Giants player that I'm going with too. He, um, <laughs> yeah, he when he was a Panther, he didn't really impress me all that much with who he could cover. But this year, I think he's played a little bit better than he has in the past. He's played very good against some of the better receivers. And I've been pretty – I've been very impressed with him this year. And he's a huge reason why that Giants defense is, like, number six in the league or something like that. Um, don't quote me on that. But I know they're up there with, like, the top ten uh, defenses. And he's a big reason. Yeah, he's really – Nice. Um, my Washington football team player, I'm going with Montez Sweat. He has five sacks this year. He's really good. We have athletic off the edge. Um, I think a lot of that Washington team is underrated. I was high on them before the season. Still kind of that way on them. I like Antonio Gibson. He's been really nice. Um, Ryan Kerrigan's great as well. Chase Young. Um, Troy Apke, the safety there, but I'm going with Montez Sweat. I think he's – he was a first-round pick, and I think he's starting to live up to it a bit. Um, looking at his career, he had seven sacks last year, actually. That's cool. And then five sacks. So, I think he's going to keep getting better and better. I think he's going to be a player that's just going to have a breakout year, and everyone's going to be like, who is this? Like, oh, he's good. This reminds me a lot of Stephon Gilmore because Gilmore was, like, good on the Bills. And then he went to the Patriots and broke out. And I think something similar could happen with Montez Sweat, where he just has a breakout season. Um, so that is my selection for the Washington football team. Yeah. Uh, like you said, there's a lot of just Washington players that are just really underrated. You know, they're not like a bunch of scrubs running around out there. There's a lot of really good players. Um Montez Sweat is definitely – I think he's starting to live up to the hype here, and I think people will start to take notice of that. Uh, my pick was the tight end. Uh, he's impressed me a lot this year. Um, and I think, Logan Wilson? Oh, yeah. What? Logan Wilson? 
No, no, Logan Thomas. Thomas, okay. Yeah. Oh, he used to play quarterback. Yeah, he was a quarterback on the Cardinals, and then he moved to tight end on the Bills, and he was there for like a few years. Now he's on the Redskins starting – or not the Redskins, the uh, the Washington team. Um, sorry, force a habit. It's uh, old habits die hard, I guess. Um, totally just uh, – I totally forgot they changed their name for a second. I think that's uh, the first time. Sorry for interrupting you and before. But I think that's the first time on this channel that I've called them that since the name changed. So we may feel 11 weeks, everyone. Yeah, I know. We did it, pretty good. I know. I, I had been pretty good about it, too. I was like the Washington football team. I uh, Yeah, I was playing an older Madden earlier, so the name doesn't change. But um, right back to Logan Thomas. We're not talking about the organization here. That's a whole nother book that can be written but uh he's been a nice playmaker for them he hasn't been like you know the best tight end but um for what's been expected out of him I think he's gone well beyond expectations he's had some nice touchdown catches some uh, some other good catches here and there um from what I've seen he's a pretty solid run blocker um yeah I really I don't know how you go from being a quarterback to a tight end and being all right at it but I mean, it's worked out pretty well for him so far. Yeah, he's been pretty great. For the Cowboys, I'm going with Alden Smith. So, first game back with the Rams, got a sack, made some nice plays. And since then, he's been pretty nice. Um, he got three sacks against Seattle. He got a sack against the Eagles. He's been good at tackling. He's been having some solid QB hits. Um I think he – I don't know. He's been more quiet recently, but I think you could argue he's a candidate for defensive player of the year. Um, you know, we've talked about – come back. Come back. Wait, did I oh, say defensive? You said defensive player of the Not year. I like come back. I don't know if they would because of why he got out. It was kind of his own fault. Pretty that he gets better and stuff. But Alden Smith, I think – we talk about this Cowboys team being very overrated. Um but I think Alden Smith is a very underrated player on that team. I think he's a nice part of that defense. Um, yeah, I think uh, he, he'd been nice over there on the edge. I don't think he's been like star, but he's definitely been better than what they've had in the past. Um, uh, yeah, Everson Griffin wasn't really doing a whole lot. Demarcus Lawrence is really had one good season, got paid, and then was just kind of like – slightly above average and that's take that as you will Cowboys fans but he's not that great um my underrated player is uh like the eighth string quarterback Gary Gilbert um I think okay, anybody man. come on dude come on look at most of this like you said most of this Cowboys team is completely overrated so looking for somebody that's underrated was kind of hard to do um Anybody who can almost beat the Steelers with the Cowboys roster, that's pretty impressive to me. So he is really the only person that fits the criteria of underrated player besides Alden Smith, in my opinion. Okay. Next up <laughs> for the NFC North, I wasn't going to go with Zadarius Smith for the Packers, but I think a lot of people are taking notice with him. I'm going to go with – this is going to be a very interesting pick, but I'm going to go with Devontae Adams. Um, here's why. Underrated. Underrated, yes. Are you sure? Yes. I, I, the media doesn't really have him underrated right now. I think you could argue he's a top three to four wide receiver, and I still feel like Devontae Adams is in this – he's really good, but he's not elite. I think he's an elite player. And I think that he is underrated because of that aspect. It's a hot take, but Tanman's hot take of the video. I just think I that – I don't he... think it's that. I mean, if you think about it this way, like Devontae Adams and Michael Thomas, what do they have in common? They're probably the top two route runners in the game. Like, they're both really, really good at it. Maybe you could throw Keenan Allen in there, right? But – Devontae Adams has a lot of things that Michael Thomas does not have. Speed, agility, hands. Like, no, okay, well, Michael Thomas doesn't not have hands, but I don't see Michael Thomas doing one-handed catches, all these ridiculous sideline grabs. He's not scoring eight touchdowns a game like Devontae Adams is. Um, you really could make a case that Devontae Adams is the best receiver in the league, and I wouldn't disagree with you. I, 
mm-hmm. I get to watch a lot of Packers football, and um, he's really good. Like he torches everybody that he plays. Mm-hmm. It seems like he he's unguardable, and then he's uncatchable. Like Michael Thomas Ooh, is unguardable, like but he's catchable, right? He has like six broken tackles in his career. Devontae Adams has like 600. I and mean, this guy, you're not going to catch him if he blows by you. Uh, he can juke you out. He, he can. He might be able to stiff arm you. I don't know. Maybe he's got that hidden up his sleeve somewhere. Um, I don't think he's I, – I don't think most people think he's underrated, but I can see where you're coming from. I, it, mm-hmm. I like that. It's kind of a hot take for an underrated player. Um, Put him up there. It's the best of the best. I think definitely. he's on the level of Julio Jones. Yeah, no, definitely. He's he's at that top tier, like cream of the crop wide receiver. Um, DeAndre Hopkins. Sorry, I'm about to go for me. DeAndre Hopkins, um, Julio, Devontae Adams are tied, and I would probably go like a Tyree Kill. Or for me, my probably my top four. Ben, who do you have for the Packers? I feel like you're going to go Zadarius Smith. Uh, no, I have an offensive lineman on here. Uh, I have David Bakhtiari on my list. Uh, yeah, Whoa. I needed to get at least one lineman in here, and this is the best left tackle in the league. And under linemen, are, <laughs> I think most of them are pretty underrated. Uh, now, Bakhtiari himself is not underrated. I think it's, like, universally agreed upon. He's the best left tackle in the game. But um, I, I feel like I just needed to bring some attention to how good this guy is, like, Aaron Rodgers never has to worry about a thing coming from David Bakhtiari's side. And that is so valuable when you're a quarterback. There are younger quarterbacks like Daniel Jones, Joe Burrow, um, probably now Lamar Jackson, who doesn't have Ronnie Stanley there because of the injury. Um, They would kill to have David Bakhtiari as their left tackle. This guy, you would never have to worry about a thing. It's – yeah, that's got to be I. That's got to be so nice to have as a quarterback. He's the Quinton Nelson of ta- of tackles, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, can we just say how fantastic Quinton Nelson is? The dude's a beast. Oh, he's an animal. I would never want to get in that dude's way. He's uh, so big. Um, Vikings. We've discussed that already in the show. Kirk Cousins. Better than people say, has bad offensive linemen moving on. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we discussed Kirk Cousins so much. I feel like we I want to yeah. talk about it. Yeah. That's who you have. Yeah, that's who I have. Yeah, we've, okay. we've gone over that a lot. He's probably the most underrated player ever. But um, yeah. Up there, at least. Sorry. Um, Lions, Kenny Galladay. Um, another wide receiver. And I know we've talked about Matt Stafford. I just said he was underrated, but. I think Matt Stafford's been more over, overrated in his career. A lot of Lions fans like Matt Stafford. I just think Kenny Galladay needs to be up there. I think he's a top 10 wide receiver. The dude's fantastic. Um, he's really good. He's my selection. Matt Stafford has had some turnovers this year. I'm like, eh. I don't know. I feel like that he's had a lot of great plays that people should acknowledge more, but they have. So I'm like, I don't know if he's that underrated this season. I, that's why I picked Kenny Galladay. Also, TJ Hawkinson has been really nice. I've had him on fantasy, and I'm like, we'll see how this goes. And Because um, I initially did not like that selection. I'm like, why well, you pick a tight end in the top 10? I still don't think it's a good positional value. I think that's one of the worst picks we've seen in a recent draft. But taking that and throwing it away, TJ Hawkinson has been playing really well. So, I have Kenny Galden, and I'll go with TJ Hawkinson as an alternate. Um, yeah, I I was debating between two players here, one of them being TJ Hawkinson, the other one being Adrian Peterson. So you can probably guess which one I picked as a Vikings fan. I'm surprised you didn't um, pick Jamie Collins because you, you got him as a pole bowl selection. We did. I don't remember putting him as a pro bowl selection. Or up there. I'm surprised. I don't even remember talking about Jamie Collins. Uh, regardless. Um, Romeo Aquara, the Lions edge rusher? Yeah, I was talking about Romeo Aquara. Oh, um, okay. I'm surprised you didn't pick him. You know, I mean, I guess uh, 
Okay, I'll change mine because Adrian Peterson doesn't really get a lot of snaps. But what I was going to say about AP is even though he doesn't get a lot of snaps, he's a nice uh, power back element that he has to that running game. Something that the Lions haven't had in a while is a power back. Um, so I think that definitely helps. But, yeah, Romeo Aquara is definitely underrated. I think he deserves a Pro Bowl bid this year. Um, he's up there with, like, top ten sacks right now. Uh, he has six sacks on the year. I know that much. Um, but he's played pretty good this year. Uh, hasn't – I think this might be his first year starting. I can't remember. Um, but regardless, he's taken advantage of the opportunities and played pretty well. Um, so, yeah, that's who my pick is. Yeah, sorry to interrupt there, Ben. But for the Chicago Bears, I have Nick Foles. Just kidding. Just kidding. We have Akeem Hicks. Akeem Hicks is, I think, an elite defensive tackle. The dude looking at his career, let's look at this. Okay, this season, so far, um, he has had, if I can, I saw this earlier, but my point being in all of this. Um, Didn't he, was, he start with the Saints? Is that where he started? He did. Oh, my gosh. So, if the Bears. Um, he was great when he got there. He had like seven sacks and eight and a half and seven and a half. Then, you know, eight and a half is when that Bears de- or seven and a half is when that Bears defense was great. Last year, the Bears defense fell off the cliff because Akeem Hicks was injured. And now he's healthy and they're great again. He now has three and a half sacks. So that's paying from about seven sacks. That's about his average. That's really great for DT. I think he's a lot of the reason why Cleo Mack is successful. Now, not to take anything away from Cleo Mack, but I think that Cleo Mack builds off of Akeem Hicks' success. I think for me, um, out of all the players that I mentioned, I think Akeem Hicks is by far the most over underrated player. I think you can maybe say that Devin White, Matt Ryan, Byron Murphy are close seconds, but Akeem Hicks is a monster, and I think he's going to – I could see Akeem Hicks like having like a milestone and people being like, who is that? Because no one talks about him. More people should. Um, I, I love the dude. So he is my selection for the Bears. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think Akeem Hicks has been really underrated throughout his whole career. Like top defensive tackles. People are like, oh, it's Aaron Donald. No, it's Chris Jones. And then Akeem Hicks is just here like, yo, I like make my whole defense run. Um <laughs> Yeah, he, he's been uh, really underrated throughout his whole career. He's a great player, huge reason why Chicago is successful, especially helps Khalil Mack get less double teams. Um, I decided to go in a different direction. I went with an offensive player here. Whoa, Bears offensive player? What the heck? I uh, know that even though they're like 33rd in offense or something like that, which is <laughs> funny you. if you know how many teams there are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Jimmy Graham hasn't been – a he hasn't been racking up the stats because you know the quarterbacks suck but uh in a in a lot of their wins he and losses he has made some really good plays and some really clutch plays too i think he's had some really good touchdown catches um and he hasn't been like this super dominant tight end but i feel like when they've needed him to he's made some pretty big plays when they can throw it to him which is not always a given with the bears which is kind of weird because you'd think uh, yeah, NFL teams, yeah, their quarterbacks can hit their targets, right? No, no, they can't. Not all of them anyways, not the Bears. Um, but, yeah, there have been a couple times this year where I've seen Jimmy Graham make a catch, and I just sit back in my chair, and I'm like, oh, that's that's the that's the Jimmy Graham from the Saints. I know that guy. <laughs> or, like, or the first year at the Seahawks, I'm like, wow, I remember that. You know, those little flashes of what he used to be have, have come back this year a little bit. Um, and it's good to see that. I, I like from him this year. Seems like he's giving his career a little little spark. Yeah, I remember that whole thing when he was on the Packers and Jordy Nelson went to the Raiders. Jordy oh, Nelson. Weird time. Jordy Nelson on the Raiders is. <laughs> Ooh. That was like Wes Welker going to the Rams or the Broncos. Or not the Broncos. He was good on the Broncos. Yeah, uh, I was about to say, hold up, man. Never mind. What? He went to another. Didn't he go to the Jets? Him after the Broncos. He went to the Rams and then he went somewhere else. Or do you, do you remember when Adrian Peterson was on the Cardinals? 
He was actually not bad on the Cardinals. We, he, when he was on the Saints, that was weird. I hated that move so much. It made sense in a way. No, it didn't. They had Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara. Okay, Adrian but, Peterson and Mark Ingram are the same exact type of runner. To be fair, Adrian Peterson was coming off a good year, so you can't blame them. Oh, I know, but you have Mark Ingram who's coming off a good year, and Alvin Kamara who's also coming off a good year, even no, though he's a think rookie. He had a good year. Oh, he was a rookie. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I thought someone came behind me. Yeah, I did, that move made zero football <laughs> sense at all. It's like, hey, why don't we go get a third running back? Oh yeah, Jim, that's a great idea. We can totally not give away what we're gonna do when we put him in there. Made that's, no sense. That's fine, Ben. Sorry for interrupting. Okay. Anyways, so we went through all of the NFC players. I'm. We're not gonna end the episode. Well, I I have a couple questions I want to ask. But what we will do is is that I want to save the AFC for the um, another episode because I don't want to rush it. Um, and plus, I don't have any prep for the AFC underrated players. A couple come to mind, but I don't want to do a start, you know, do that section. So, Ben, a bit, bit of some football news. Jordan Howard is going back to the Eagles. <laughs> Is he actually going back, or yeah. is it like rumored? The Eagles <sighs> signed him. What's how? How are you doing with that? <laughs> I I mean, I'm glad he's okay. So in a way, I'm glad he's not going back to the Bears because that means they would be better, right? At the same time, as a if I'm not a Vikings fan, I'm pissed at the Bears because I'm like, what are you doing? Like that has been your only good running back since Matt Forte has retired. Like, go get him. Uh, it's really. Uh, the Bears are so frustrating. Montgomery is injured. You you have this absolute no name guy who got stuffed by the Vikings defensive line. I don't even know. You need so much help on the offense. Go get the power back who ran for like a thousand yards when you had him on your team. I don't know why the Bears are so hesitant to go back and get him because they've had nothing since they let him go. For the Eagles, this oh, – <laughs> I, like it, it makes sense because they don't have a big back right now. Miles Sanders and Boston Scott are both pretty small. Uh, I don't know if I don't know what other running backs are on their roster. Is Corey Clement still there? He's not yes. very big either. Yeah, touchdown against the Giants. Yeah, all those guys are really small and they're around two hundred pounds. Jordan Howard's around two twenty five. I think he's around. I want to say he's around six foot, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, I know he's at least heavier than they are, and he is a decent power back when he's used right. And I don't know. I thought Miami was going to use him a little bit better, and that's really my one criticism of how they've mishandled their running back room is they've had – they trade for Matt Breida, signed Jordan Howard, and then used Miles Gaskin, who was on the team last year. And Miles Gaskin is effective when they give him the ball. So. It's a bit frustrating, but I feel like Howard has been kind of a victim of circumstance. But hopefully Doug Peterson can use Jordan Howard the right way this time and not say, hey, go catch passes. You know, like, he's a power back. He's not going to go run a 30-yard post. Uh, I'm for sure if Doug Peterson's play calling. We'll see how this goes. I like the move. Hopefully he can redeem himself. But anyways, then another thing. The Bears have to sign Deshaun Kaiser to the practice squad. Who moved Deshaun Kaiser to the practice squad? The Bears. The Bears? Mm -hmm. Oh. Interesting. Do I kind you... of forgot he was around. I thought Oh, 16 that... yeah, yeah, I remember him now. Oh, man. That poor guy got put in such a bad situation. I actually think that he's not bad. I actually think he could succeed on a team if you develop him. Yeah, he would he go to the Packers for a few years. That's where he was hanging around. Uh, I think it could be interesting. I mean, really, if they don't like Tyler Bray, I think Sean Kaiser's probably better. I haven't seen much of Tyler Bray, but you know, from like the few throws I saw against Minnesota, it. Uh, well, you could you could do a little bit of kicking the cans on some other guys, see what's out there, especially because well now you only have one healthy quarterback. 
Um, this could be interesting, though. If he plays nice, like if he gets out there, plays good, eh, we'll see if he sticks around on the team. I mean, uh, regardless, I think Chicago is going to get a quarterback in the offseason, whether it's a free agent or in the draft. And, I mean, yeah, it could be It could be interesting. I don't know who's going to be a free agent this year as far as quarterbacks, but – could be pretty interesting if Chicago actually decides to go get a quarterback this year. Yeah. Um, Deshaun Kaiser had 11 touchdowns, 24 picks his rookie year, which sounds like really bad, but a lot of rookie quarterbacks, like the rookie class a couple of years ago, averaged around 15 pick touchdowns. Like I watched some Kaiser and I thought he wasn't that bad. He was just calling Jameis Winston. Wee! Check it up there yeah. with a lot less weapons. We. <laughs> I think that he still has some talent as like a backup guy. He's like Ryan Fitzpatrick, except younger. I think Fitzpatrick's better. What about Ryan Fitzpatrick to the Bears? No, he turns the ball over too much. I, I mean, at least he can hit his players. I mean, <laughs> ben with Nicole's that offense, with that to offense, stop. it has I mean, to stop. Yeah, no, the Bears got to stop chasing these, like, really old journeymen for sure. Uh, would be interesting to see where Fitzmagic ends up next year, though, because I don't think he's going to stay in Miami. I think he might retire. Um, he, he actually, he might hang it up, call it a career. He's, like, 38. He's old. Um, that wouldn't surprise me. I know Josh McCown is still hanging around on the Eagles practice squad, too. I, You know, I'm actually a bit surprised the Bears didn't uh, sign him. I don't know. McCown, I don't know if he fits Matt Nagy's type of play style. Maybe not, maybe not but, I mean, he's a quarterback. <laughs> like, True. That's, that's good enough at this point. <laughs> um, oh, you meant now. Why, why has he not yeah. been starting for the Eagles? I mean, I thought he did well for the <laughs> Seattle game. And, like, he's a veteran. Like, if Carson Wentz is not working out, it's not a terrible idea. Uh. I guess. I mean, you don't really want to turn to a 41-year-old quarterback to try and save your season. But because McCown is no young man either. Him and Fitzmagic have been around longer than the dinosaurs have. And <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. They just seem to just stick around. Uh, it's not like it's not like they're bad quarterbacks. I think, I think McCown did what he could last year against Seattle when he had to fill in for – Wentz, you know, um, got thrown in there with really little prepper. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what the Bears do here, but this could be interesting. You know, I hope Trubisky's out the rest of the year with some kind of terrible shoulder injury and he can't play because I don't want to see him out there. It's really boring and terrible and it's bad football. I hope Foles doesn't come back because it's the exact same. It just looks different because he's got a different number and longer hair. Uh, Maybe trying to spice things up with even a guy who just throws interceptions would be interesting. Like, ah, at least they could throw it in the general vicinity of their receiver, please. I just, I can't have the Bears on my TV anymore. It's so boring. Like, one time, the only game I could watch was the Giants and Bears. That was the most painful thing I've ever witnessed. They had like 12 yards of offense going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, um, we've talked about the Bears a lot. Teddy, I could see going there. But Ben, let's talk about another player. Let's talk about Odell Beckham Jr. and Jimmy Garoppolo. Two players who the media really likes. Odell last year wasn't that great with the Browns. He's had a bit of a turnaround season. People say he might leave. Where could you see him going? Where do you want him to go? Where's, what's your thoughts on Odell? I'll go first. I'll say this about Odell Beckham Jr. I think he's a top 10 wide receiver. I don't think he's an elite one anymore. I think he's lost a step. But I think he's still a really nice player. And I think if you put him in a system that it doesn't rely on him, you're good. Like, if the Niners went and got him, running the ball, play action, that's what the Browns do. I could see that. Um, I think the Dolphins maybe, but I don't know. I guess I could see that we, but they kind of have that Devontae Parker and Preston Williams. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, 
Oh, the I, Packers, have, I have a the, perfect spot for where I think the he The Packers can. would be nice. That would be nice, him and Devontae Adams. What's your spot, Ben? I, I think his best fit would be in a system because I think Odell is really, really – he's got a lot of really good talent. But I think he's a bit lazy when he's out there. Like, he lazy. wants to just – make a lot of like cool plays, but he doesn't want to run across the middle of the field on the slant and get hit by a linebacker. Like he doesn't really go after those that much. Like when he was with the giants and Eli Manning was in like his last season there, I watched a, a film analysis um, of Odell Beckham. And there were a lot of plays where he really, he could have caught the balls if he really wanted to, but he didn't try that hard for them, and that's kind of always stuck in my brain. And I think, I think he's been better about it in Cleveland. I think he's kind of gotten his act together a bit more. But yeah. I still think he would be better in a system that relies more on you being talented and less about you being this really good, like, route runner that really knows the playbook, the art of positioning, and all that. Like, if you can just get somewhat open – and the quarterback can hit you, and you can make some kind of cool catch. The Chiefs. Um, yeah, well, yeah, Chiefs. I, I don't even know. Do they have the cap space for that? Who knows? But I think the perfect place for him to go and do that would be Seattle. And that's terrifying to think of because they already have two really good receivers. But I think I think he would love it there. Um, the locker room vibes seem really chill in Seattle. It doesn't seem like there's really ever anything going on unless your name is Earl Thomas. Um, and he hasn't been there in a while. Um, yeah, I – he would like it there because he would have more ability to after – a, after a play break, breaks down and Russell Wilson's running around, he would have an ability to try and go somewhere else on the field, make this crazy catch. That's a lot of what the Seahawks offense is, in my opinion. Um, it's obviously not all just backyard football, but I think that would be a good system for him. And it would also probably give the Seahawks the best wide receiving court in the league. But um, that's where I think his best fit would go. If not, I think he'd go to a division rival with Baltimore. They really need a playmaker. No, 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 no. They've got some solid receivers. Like, like I said, Willie Sneed is good at some things, but he's not really great at any one thing. Odell Same Beckham is at least – yeah. yeah. Odell Beckham is at least great at one thing, and that's making contested catches. Like – well, making flashy catches. That's what I should say. He's a really good playmaker. Um, and that's something the Ra or not the Rams, the Ravens don't really have a lot of in their receiving core right now. Like they've got, they got Sneed, they got Hollywood Brown, who's like, I don't know. Speedsters are usually hit or miss. You end up with Tyree Kill or you end up with John Ross. And there's really no in between, I feel like. Uh, I think Beckham's more than speed. Um, sorry to cut oh, off no, for there. sure. Yeah, he's he's a lot of uh, – he's, he's a pretty solid route runner. He's got great hands. I just – that that video of watching him in his last year with Eli just really sticks in my head, and it rubs me the wrong way. And a lot of things he's done has. So, But I'm learning to forgive and forget. And he has played a lot better this year. It's unfortunate he tore his ACL because Baker mm -hmm. Mayfield sucks. But – um. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that that had to happen. As we've talked about before, I'm not a huge fan of critiquing people on the work ethics that they're not trying enough. But I don't want to get into that. I I do think I know what you're talking about vaguely. I kind of agree. I think Odell is not a polished route runner, but I don't think that has to do anything with effort. I just think that's the way he works as an NFL player. I thought about Seattle. I just didn't have him going there because of the whole DK Metcalf thing. Um, he's already kind of an Odell Beckham Jr. But I could see him working there really well, actually. I think he would work well with the locker room. The Seahawks have that Go Hawks vibe, and I think he would fit really well into that. But I'm actually going to the Texans. I could see that. I yeah. Yeah. I didn't even think about that, actually. Watson can do the same thing, run around. They have a lot. They don't really have a position guy there. And I think, you know, there's stuff to build around. So I could see Houston. Um, I think that's kind of a type of culture you would like to go to, have fun. Um, 
I still think he has a lot of talent in him, and I think sometimes people give him unfair hate. Like, um, this is... Oh, you're going to talk about earlier this year? The whole, I'm not going to mention the whole thing, yeah. but if you know what I'm talking about, the whole poop thing, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> People roasted him for that. Oh. And it's like, that's there was his... There's not even any evidence for that either. Yeah, Somebody it's... just said that, and yeah, it's ridiculous. I guess I'll mention on the air, um, mute if you want to. I'll put my hand up if you guys don't want to hear this. But anyways, hand up, so better mute. So earlier this year, there's a report that Odell... <laughs> Actually, I can't mention it. Okay, I can't do it. But anyways, my point uh, is... I think people know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the, the point is, I think sometimes he gets too much hate. Like, that thing, yeah, it's not my thing at all. But what he's doing is not harming anyone, and yet people still give him hate for that. I, I just think he's in this thing where a lot of people dislike him. But he, like you said, he, he's done a lot better in Cleveland. I could maybe see the Bills... I know it'd be fun, him and stuff. He honestly could go to any team, really. And I would be like, oh, that's a good move. Except for the Panthers. I feel like he has too much beef with the Panthers. Because the whole Josh Norman thing. Well, he's not on the team. Yeah, I know. But I I don't think think the the Panthers organization just likes him. Um, Yeah. Um, Can we talk about Josh Norman for a second? What happened to him? Fell off a cliff. I he had one good season. Like he was literally, it was like Demarcus Lawrence. He was all right. Then he had one good season, and then the Panthers were like, "Wait, he only had one good season? Yeah, no, get out of here." And then Washington was like, "Oh, we'll take we'll take a really good corner because Dan Schneider thinks he's this like football genius." <laughs> and uh, yeah, that whole fiasco happened, and then he was terrible in Washington. This dude was like. Looked like Xavier Rhodes in his last year with the Vikings, but like every play, it was so bad. Yeah, it's unfortunate. He's with the Bills now, right? I think so. I think he's also hurt. I don't think he's playing right now. Gotcha. Praise that he gets better. It's corners are hard position with the rules now in the NFL. I don't think. Well, I want to talk about this. I think corner you need to have a at least one good one and one good safety. I think that's really all you need. I don't think it's like a super valuable position. I think I, I was not a fan of the Jeff Okuda pick at all with the Lions. I was not a fan of it. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I didn't love him as a prospect. I just don't think corner is something super valuable because it takes a while to learn. So I don't – I just wasn't a fan of that. I'm actually going to see real quick who I had him going in my mock draft. I just think corners you need – Yes, you need good players, but you also need – I don't think you want to spend too much money on them because some of the teams with the best corners, like Stephon Gilmore, he's not carrying that defense. If you have a great defense, a corner can help. But if you have a great corner that doesn't meet, make a good defense. Um, right. That If that makes any sense. Yeah, like a lot of the defenses that Patrick Peterson has been on have not been all that great. But Patrick Peterson has done his part. It's just they – sometimes they aren't super impactful. Like if the team has more than one good wide receiver, well, you only have one dude. You can't cover both of them. So – or not with that one guy anyways. Um. So, yeah. Are you playing a game? No, I'm looking at my mock draft. Oh. I had Jerry Judy going to the Raiders. Uh, I think the Raiders might regret skipping on that one. I don't know. Henry Ruggs has been nice. He's been nice, but he's kind of giving me John Ross vibes. Uh-oh. He's missed a lot of time, been injured. He's made some nice plays, though, which is better than anything John Ross has done with the Bengals. Um. But, like, does Henry Ruggs even have, like, 10 catches yet this year? He's been injured. I know, but that's my point. He's, like, 150 pounds. But he's been injured. Well, yeah. Oh, I see. Because of his size. Because of his size. He's very thin. And, like, he's fast, but 
you know, Jerry Judy has looked amazing. I mean, I saw him moss a dude for a touchdown. Like, yeah, well, Jerry sure, Judy's I mean, way better. Yeah. So I had Jeff Okuda going seven to the Panthers. Would have been interesting, um, to say the least. But, yeah, corner, I mean, I think it just depends. Like, Joan Ramsey, really great corner. He helps out that team, James Bradbury, Darius Williams, some of the people we mentioned today. But I just don't know if it's a position you put that much money into. Um, like, I'm trying to think of a team that puts the correct amount of money. Like, the Colts. They don't have an elite corner, but they're pretty solid. Well, Xavier Rhodes has been playing pretty good this year. It's really well, like I said, he's not an elite. But... He's very good, but not an elite. Yeah, I mean, I haven't watched enough Colts football, so I can't really. I I think he's – yeah, he's been playing pretty good, but not elite. Yeah, you're right. Um, as long as you have a guy who can take a number one for most of the plays and not get smoked, I think you'll be fine. So, literally any defense except the Vikings. My goodness. Uh, hey, you know what? They've actually held their own the past few weeks. I'm proud of them. Those young guys. Jeff Gladney has made a couple really good plays, and I've been waiting for him to do that. Um, he's probably my favorite corner that we drafted. And there's a dude named Chris Boyd. He's all, he's like a seventh-round draft pick that's starting right now, and it's it's painful. We got We got three draft picks from this year starting a corner. Oh, yikes. Well, corner's a tough position, so. Yeah, no, I can see that every week when I watch the Vikings play football. I'm like, <laughs> wow, that's the best we got, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, but, you know, hey, they've taken some good steps forward, so I'm proud of uh, Mike Zimmer for bringing him along. I, I don't yeah. think he's on the hot seat anymore. He, he's he's bringing these guys together a little bit. He's yeah. Cool. Um, Anthony so- Harris, on the other hand, he stinks. Well, we don't talk about the Vikings anymore. It's enough of that. Yeah. Uh, corner is a very interesting position. I think you at least need one good one. I do like that idea. Mm-hmm. Ben, before we end off this episode, talking about Jimmy Garoppolo. We've talked about a lot of quarterbacks on this show. I feel like we haven't talked about Jimmy G recently. So what's your thoughts on him? I think he is the perfect definition of a system quarterback. If you put him in a good system, he can have success. He can have some nice plays, but if he doesn't and that system doesn't work, he's not going to be that great. So I want I would put him around right. like 14, think, 15. Yeah, I think in terms of raw talent, like he can't throw the ball super far. He's not the most accurate quarterback. He's not the best decision maker. He isn't the worst runner, but he's not the best runner. He doesn't have the best pocket presence, but he doesn't have the worst pocket presence. It's a lot of like what I said with Willie Sneed earlier. Yeah, he's good at a lot of things. But there's not one thing that really stands out to me. He's a good – I think he's a good field general, even though he doesn't make mm-hmm. the best decisions. And he's a good system quarterback. I think he's better than Jared Goff is. And he's – I think Jared Goff is a uh, system quarterback. I disagree. I think Goff is a better deep ball thrower. thrower. Yeah, but Goff big... isn't as good of a decision maker. Goff, Goff throws a lot of picks. Like so he loves games where he well. doesn't. I mean, I, don't know. I think they're about equal. I think they're equal. I'll say that. I think Tannehill is better, a better version of Garoppolo and Goff. Well, that's because he can run. Well, um, no, I think Tannehill's just a better pure passer than those guys. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Tannehill. Yeah, Garoppolo, I don't think he's. I think the media gives him too much hate. Like, not every quarterback is going to be. Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes, you can't expect the same out of every quarterback because you just – that's really hard to do. And Garoppolo is not one of those guys. But I don't think he's a bad quarterback either. He certainly has yeah. flaws, but I think most quarterbacks have flaws. I, I still have yet to find Patrick Mahomes' flaw, but uh, outside of him, I feel like there's at least one for every quarterback. Um Garoppolo, like I said, he a lot like – I think I already said this. Like my Willie Sneed comparison, good at a lot of things. Not really great at any one thing, though. But he is a nice field general, and he's a good system quarterback. Put the right pieces around him, and he can get you to a Super Bowl and almost win. Yeah, we'll see. I like that. I think that's perfectly said. I don't think he's bad. 
I think it's a lot of hate. I agree with that. I, I think he's good at a lot of things, I, but I do think he could be better. And I think a lot of people are judging him like a veteran, but he's only played. So here's the thing with Garoppolo. He was traded with the Niners. He was traded. He was really good, won a couple of games. He was an injured. So he's only really had one full season. And his other games, he's probably about played two full years. So, yeah. I don't think I we can have a injury does play a bit into his future though, because the Niners are like, all right, this guy's missed significant time in two of the three and a half seasons we've had him. Do we you want know, to run it back with him one more time, or do we want to go get his replacement? Sign up. You know what he reminds me a lot of? If let me look up this person real quick. He reminds me Jake Plummer. Just no, no. <laughs> um, Rich Gannon. Why the Rich old Gannon? Raiders quarterback? Yeah, here's why. Because for me, Gannon and I think Garoppolo are going to be journeymen. I think they're going to be journeymen throughout their career. I don't think Garoppolo is going to be a Niner. I could see having in the future Garoppolo kind of being a Fitzpatrick, being a really good backup, or I could see him going to a team and having like a breakout season. Like say five years he goes to like the, the Saints and like has an MVP-like season. But I don't know if he'll be consistently that great, but I think he would have that potential because we've seen it. We can be really good. I just don't know if he's on a week-to-week basis. In terms of what the Niners should do, I think you give him another shot. I think you give him another year, kind of with the whole Lamar Jackson thing. I think you wait to see how he does. I don't think you automatically give up on the dude. I think he's he fits well for the Niners. Kyle Shanahan likes him. So I don't think you give up on him quite yet. If he – if they do, I would be really shocked. I could see maybe the Bears, but then again, we've talked about the Bears a lot. So the Niners, you know, you just don't know because Derek Carr, I forgot what it was. We had like a bad season like a year or two ago, and then they kept him around, and he's playing really good. So you just never know. I think you give him another year for Garoppolo. For sure, yeah. I don't think you should give up on your quarterback in – your Super Bowl hangover year or a year when you're missing most of your players. I mean, it yeah. feels like the Niners lose two players for every one that they sign to their team. It's uh, it's pretty ridiculous. They've, they've This has been, like, probably the worst injury bug I've seen on any team. They just hurt all of them. Yeah, prayers up to them. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to think if there's any other topics we want to – Talk about just that DeAndre Hopkins Hail Mary was fantastic. Be interested to see what the Cardinals do. We're recording this on the night of their loss against the Seahawks. I think they might win a playoff game. I just don't see them being a Super Bowl contender. I still think they're a year away. I still think their defense, they need a defensive lineman. Chandler Jones, I know, is injured, but he's not on the defensive line. I think they should have traded for J.J. Watt, and I'll still stand by that. The kind of like, no, I was going to say like the Packers, but they're not. I don't, I don't think the Cardinals, this is their year. If It wouldn't shock me because they have that spectacular value, but I mean, they're six and four. I think they'll make the playoffs at 11 and five, 10 and six, and maybe win a game and then be right. one and done and be like, oh, we'll see next season. I still think Kyler needs a little bit of time to develop his decision making a little bit more, a little. Little little bit of uh, refining the accuracy. He's he's almost where he sh- I think he should be with his accuracy. Um, he's been very solid this year. I think the decision making is still not quite there yet, but he's come a long way since his rookie season, and I'm really proud of him. Um, but this team is really young, uh, most of them, anyways. But uh, this needs to this Cardinals team needs to happen next year because. Patrick Peterson and Chandler Jones are are getting old. Fitzgerald is not going to be around forever. Um, yeah, there there are some very important old guys on this team. So if mm-hmm. you're going to make it happen, it needs to be soon. I think that's what the Cardinals need to keep in mind. Um, I think a tight end would really help. I like Dan Arnold, but he is really just kind of a tall wide receiver who gets like one or two passes. I think you could go get a good run blocking tight end like Mercedes Lewis from the Packers. Ooh. And that would really help the running game. I know they've struggled a bit. 
this year. And I'm not sure if it's more Kenyon Drake's fault or the Lions' fault. Um, but Drake actually has had a couple of really nice games so far. He just had a kind of a slow start to the season. Chase Edmonds has been nice. Uh, the defense, I think, still needs a bit more help. I think they could go get another – let's see. who's the, They've got Jordan Hicks. They've got Isaiah Simmons. Who's the other linebacker? Hassan Reddick? They could get another linebacker or start Isaiah Simmons. Yeah, they could – getting another defensive lineman would be huge. Corey Peters is nice, but he's old and just got hurt. Um, you could maybe draft a defensive tackle. I know Indomitian Sue is only on a one-year deal with the Bucks, so we'll see what he does. Uh, I don't think Damon Harrison is on a team right now, and I'm not really sure why. Ooh, what? Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't think he's on a team. NFL has been kind of weird with old free agents. Like, they don't want to take any chances with dudes who are really proven. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Like, why would you want to go with all these young guys that you can clearly see aren't that good when you've got, like, a dude like Damon Harrison on the market just because he's a little bit older? Um, yeah, yeah I think point. getting – Getting an interior pass rusher or another defensive end will be huge for this Cardinals team in the offseason. That, I think, will push them into Super Bowl contenders instead of just a playoff team. I think they'll still make the playoffs. I had them losing this game anyways. but um, And it is encouraging to see that they kept it close with the Seahawks twice. They can hang with the best of the best. Um, yeah. They're close. They're really close. The young guys, if they – progress like they have will be a lot better next year. If the old guys can stay younger for just a bit longer, <laughs> this this might work out. It it's really all about timing this whole thing. If if the old guys start to drop off next year and the young guys don't come along as far as they should, this might not work out and we might not get to a Super Bowl because we're the Cardinals. So I think Kyle Murray will win one in his time here. Whatever happens to the Cardinals, we'll be here to cover. And that will conclude conclude today's episode of the Man to Man Coverage Podcast. I've been the Tamman. Ben, thanks for joining me. Always a pleasure, man. And hope you guys enjoy these face cam episodes. I think we have a lot more interaction. I am I am enjoying these episodes a lot more as well. Um, we could do a live stream here and there, maybe just a Q and A, just no Madden, maybe just the PS4 home screen. Um. But anyways, that'll do it for this episode. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care, and have a good one.